Hi everyone, welcome back to Jay's Office Hours. I'm Jay Wells and I'm here to answer your questions about the craft and life of being a writer. Um, and today I actually have a question that was submitted by one of the subscribers to this channel. His name is Chris Hoyle and I'm going to read his question to you so that I get it right. He says, I've really enjoyed this series of videos. Thanks for sharing your tips and experience with the rest of us. I have a suggestion for a future video. Would you mind doing a post that offers tips for conveying emotion and tone within action? Basically, I'm saying ways of describing interaction and dialogue between characters, aside from repetitively ending phrases with something like, good job, she, she said sarcastically. Thanks for your posts. Chris, thank you for your question. Uh, this is actually a really important topic because all good fiction revolves around tension. Um, it can be big tension, such as uh, a major conflict between a character um, needing or wanting something and the obstacles that stand in their way, or smaller moments of tension um, between characters. Uh, specifically, um, a character wants something in a scene and another character is trying to get them from from is trying to prevent them from getting it. Um, and sometimes it isn't about the main conflict of the story. It's just a moment of tension within the scene uh, having to do with somebody not wanting to share some information or trying to hide how they re really feel. But basically, uh, if you look at a story that way, it's just beats of tension over and over again. And really, every page of your story should have some kind of tension on it. And one of the ways that we uh, create that when we're writing dialogue is by using techniques um, that sort of constantly are hitting on that tension note. And there are several ways to do it, which I'm going to talk about today. Um, but the first thing you want to do when you're writing a scene that's going to involve dialogue is to think about what everyone's stakes are in this scene. What is the point of view character's stake? What are they looking for? What are they trying to get? What is their goal? And also you should know what the other characters want in this situation. Are they trying to hide something? Are they trying to talk the character, the main character out of something? Um, are they trying to, um, I don't know, what, are, what do they want? Or what do they want? What do they not want to see happen? And if you're clear on that, then it makes it easier as you're writing to um, underscore that tension with body language and tone of voice and, and other techniques. But you need to understand what the stakes are before you begin or figure it out while you're writing the scene and then revise once you know the stakes. Um, so uh, he asked about avoiding things like she said sarcastically. Um, and there's a lot of debate in the writing community about using dialogue tags um, that have adverbs in them. Um, a lot of people say it's lazy writing. I don't mind it so much as long as it's not overdone. There are some writers who use it very well. Um, some of it can depend on your genre. Uh, for example, uh, the Harry Potter series is full of those kinds of dialogue tags. Um, but she's writing for a younger audience. So sometimes, you know, that may work for that audience where it wouldn't work for an adult audience. <clears throat> Excuse me. But one of the ways you can get around uh, the said sarcastically, um, she whispered, whatever, um, is to instead describe the character's tone of voice. So you would say your bit of dialogue what do you mean, question mark, end quote. Um, her voice cracked on the last word. Or, um, you know, it, it was high pitched. Or she said in a low tone. Depending on the tone of voice somebody says something in can tell you a lot about the context of of the words within the quotation marks. Again, this is not a technique you want to use on every line of dialogue, but on something important, something where you're trying to convey someone holding something back or there being some subtext in the dialogue, it's an effective technique to uh, refer to what, what their tone of voice sounded like. And when you do that, you want to use a unique way of describing it so that it doesn't come across as a cliche, because that's one of the reasons we don't like the adverbial quote 
tag structure is that it ends up being cliche and the reader's eyes just kind of scan past it because they've read it a million times before. But if you can write the tone of voice in an interesting way, use um, some kind of simile or metaphor or um, compare it to something else uh, that really gives it an, an idea of what their voice sounded like and what we're supposed to understand from that, it can be effective. Um, but again, you don't want to use this every time somebody says something. <clears throat> Another way to break up dialogue to use to create tension is to describe somebody's body language. Again, not every time somebody says something and only if it's meaningful body language. You know, if somebody's just sitting there and they like scratch their nose, um, that's not that interesting unless scratching their nose means something. Uh, or you can have somebody's um, shift in their chair uh, can sometimes indicate uh, they're uncomfortable. Um, you can have them look away. You can have them um, refuse to meet the point of view character's eyes. Uh, we've seen all of this before, right? You've seen this in fiction. Um, but you want to do it with purpose. You want to do it only when it's meaningful and when it it's revealing something about that character to the reader. Um, and again, you want to keep it fresh if you can. Don't just write the cliche. Um, I know that my first drafts are riddled with raised eyebrows and shrugs and head nods and things like that. And it's something that uh, is a crutch during my drafts. But I do try when I go back into my uh, revisions to take out unnecessary ones um, to take out ones that are overused and put in something fresh if I can or see if it's even needed. So use it strategically is what I'm saying to you. Um, another way to convey tension during dialogue is um, by focusing on what's not being said. Um, this can include things like moments of silence. Like if, if somebody is asked a direct question and they refuse to answer it, that's meaningful. Um, if your point of view character knows a bit of information um, and asks the other character about it, and they give different, and they they leave something out that the point of view character knows, that's telling and can create tension. Um, also, if people cut themselves off where they're talking or uh, they interrupt somebody else, these are moments of things not being said that add subtext to the conversation and can create an enormous amount of tension. Again. Don't use it all the time. Some of these techniques you only want to use when there is actual hardcore tension happening. Um, but they can also create these little moments of micro tension if needed to keep the story moving. Um, another way to create tension is to have your point of view character, uh, their internalizations um, reveal something about what they're thinking or experiencing during the conversation or what they're thinking about what the other person's thinking or saying, uh, that can create some tension. Don't overuse it. Um, I guess I should just say that at the beginning, don't overuse any of this, but, uh, I, it bears repeating. Um, another really great way, and this is one of my favorite ways to create tension, especially if there's real tension happening, if there's an argument happening or a fight or, um, there's a lot at stake in the scene, then a great way to reveal tension and to build it is to have, um, to reveal um, physical reactions to stress, both in your point of view character and in the people that they're talking to. Um, these are things like, um, you know, the point of view character is talking to somebody and the person they're talking to says something very important and there's a physical response to that information. It can be, you know, a pounding heart, sweaty palms, your scalp crawls, um, the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. These are cliches. You're going to write it much more uh, fresh than that. But those are, ex those are examples of what I'm talking about. It's that we have responses to emotion and stress that we cannot control that are physical reactions and they are indicative of our emotional state and so um, you can also use it if your point of view character is noticing those reactions in the people they're talking to somebody's um, cheeks flush uh, that can be embarrassment it can be um, discomfort um, it can be anger um, if somebody's uh, 
you know, they get goosebumps or um, they shift in their seat when some when something shifts in the conversation. Uh, although that that isn't technically um, one of these physical responses I'm talking about, but but use these physical cues, these emotional responses that our bodies have to create tension. You can see, even in its best, if these if people are having these physical responses and they contradict what they're saying, that creates a lot of tension, right? If somebody's smiling but they're sweating. If sweat breaks out on their forehead or their upper lip, something's wrong there. There's tension there between what they're saying and what they're feeling. And we want to see that. Um, that's a way to show emotion. Uh, and it's quite effective. And there are dictionaries online and you can buy books that describe um, your physical reactions to different types of emotions. Um, we tend to see the same ones over and over again in fiction and they become cliche, but there's some really cool ones. And if you can find new ways to describe them, that's even better. Um, the other thing you can do to master these techniques is to see how the authors you love to read do it. Uh, you know, I've talked before in my read like a writer post or um, video, like sit down with a book and read through it. Um, I actually, to prepare for this video, I got out my book, Deadly Spells, and I looked through a couple of my other books and I was like, okay, how do I handle this? You know, and I was saying, oh, I'm, you know, people are, we're describing the, the tone of voice. Um, I'm describing when, what's happening when somebody's not speaking. Um, I'm seeing their body language change. I'm seeing them, um, where are they looking? What are they pointing to? How are they interacting with their environment? You know, you can use the setting. Um, you know, if somebody is trying to hide something, have them stand behind, uh, have a desk between them and the person they're talking to or some other barrier, because that can, you know, psychologically um, underpin the idea that they're hiding something. Um, use the environment um, to ramp up tension between Two people talking. Is there something happening in the background of the conversation that's ramping up the tension? There was a great scene in my book. Um, was it Deadly Spells or Cursed Moon? It's the one um, where they're, they go to the junkyard. I think it's Deadly Spells. They go to the junkyard to, to find a guy and um, a junkyard dog attacks them. And they manage to get themselves locked into this... Um, like office, when those portable offices you'll find like on a construction site. And while they're having the showdown with this wizard who um, is threatening Morales with the weapon, there is a dog banging on the door constantly trying to get at them. And so the tension of that scene is super high because you have a confrontation happening, but you also have this constant noise against the wall. So you can use techniques like that. Um, so I hope that helps. Um, if you have any other questions or you have suggestions for other topics you'd like for me to tackle, I would be more than happy to do that. Just leave a comment um, in the comment section below. Um, as usual, please check out my website, www.jwells.com, for information about my books, for articles on writing craft and the writing life, and information about my upcoming events. I hope you all are enjoying your writing and that you, if you did NaNoWriMo, that you're feeling successful, whether you reached the 50,000 word goal or not, because any word you write is progress. Do not feel bad if you didn't hit the 50. I have tried nano many times and have never been able to do it. So um, if you did manage to do it, congratulations. That's a big accomplishment. But we're wrapping up November. And if you have any suggestions for posts in the new year or for December, please let me know. And happy writing. Thank you.